Have you ever wanted to be so good at sales that you can actually sell a pen to anybody? Well, Susan today will teach us all the biggest secrets of sales. She took what was a horrible experience when she was buying a shed for herself and decided to start her own company, which is now one of the top shed dealers in the US. We have a little red mini out here and we're giving it away. You're giving away a car? We're giving away a car. Can you maybe sell me this pen? Sure. When I became a shed dealer, I didn't know anything about the construction industry or how I was gonna find a customer. We put together processes that work and we're gonna show you how you can do it too. Well, Susan, tell us a little bit about your background, when and why you started Shed Go. Well, interesting story, about five years ago, my husband built us a shed. Uh, didn't turn out so well, spent thousands of dollars, decided to buy a shed and have it delivered. We had a really horrific experience trying to buy a shed and decided that uh, we would start selling them ourselves and we would do it differently. When you did start, Susan, what were some of the challenges that you were faced with initially? You know, biggest challenge, not knowing the construction industry at all, not knowing where we were gonna get our customers, how we were gonna get our customers, and not having a solid business plan when we started. All right, well, let's leave the answers to what you did to change that later on in the videos, you guys, so keep Sounds watching. Good. What's the number one factor driving your growth? I mean, it's no joke to be one of the top US shed dealers. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us and, and the other dealers that I see that are very successful is consistency. It is about doing it and doing it regularly. What is it? Right. For us, we use a lot of Facebook marketing. We use the free Facebook marketplace. We host multiple times a week. We're in tons of different groups and that has really made a huge difference. That is where the majority of our customers come from and, mm -hmm. and I don't see a lot of dealers doing that, which is interesting. Susan, let's talk more about your systems that you have for organizing and following up on leads. Yeah. Like anything else that we need to touch on? Really good question. Super important in this industry or any sales industry. Of course. So we have an Excel spreadsheet, nothing special. We have spreadsheets for everything. So when a customer comes in, we're putting down the date, what we talk to them about, their name, their phone number, their email. And we usually call two or three days later, send an email just to follow up and see what questions they have. You mentioned a form that you use when you meet with a customer, the customer yes. information yes. sheet was a CIS. CIS. <laughs> there you go. Tell you us know, a little bit about that. Did you design it? We did. What does that do to your business? We did. You know, there's a lot of information that we need to gather to make sure that we're putting together a, an accurate quote, which everybody mm -hmm. appreciates. And so uh, it, it's just an outline of a conversation, but it's so critical to use. And so we've, you know, we put that together. It works fantastic and we use it. 100% of the time. Will you be willing to share that form with us? And Absolutely. Our awesome, Absolutely. we'll make sure we leave that in the description below. Where is Shed Gallant's revenue last year and where yeah. are you monthly from year to date? Yeah. So in addition to the Graceland Portable Buildings, we also represent several metal building companies. So our total monthly revenue right now is between 40 and $50,000. I expect this year it'll probably bump up at least 100 to 150,000 from that. Oh wow, so for yeah. 2022, you're gonna be what, close to a million bucks, it sounds like. Well, it. I sure hope right. so. In terms of leads and how you get more leads, I want to dive more yeah. again, sales, marketing, yeah. right? You use Facebook. Yep. Any other unique approaches that you do to generate more customers? Yeah. We have a lot of followers on our Facebook page, uh, you know, more followers than 95% of the dealers with any company out there. So we get a lot of customers through our Facebook page. Again, going back to that Facebook marketing, for mm -hmm. us, it's where it's at. There could be ways that work just as well, right. if not better, but it works for us and we're killing it. So Why, why do you think you have more followers on Facebook than yeah. others? Is it just goes yeah. down to consistency and yeah. something yeah. else that you're doing? We consistently post and we give away a lot of things and people know that's how we use our marketing money. Mm -hmm. I think people appreciate the fact that we give back. Um, I could spend the same amount on whatever radio or newspaper. That's number true. one, it's not going to be as effective. And number two, it doesn't give anything to the people that have supported us over the last almost five years now. Wow. I like that approach. I think it's Thank you. super successful. You guys comment below. Tell us if you're doing that and how that's helped increase your business as well. 
I see that your core has your logo, logo all over, yes. logo on your shirt. Yep. Let's talk about the importance of branding yeah. and anything else you want to touch on that. Yeah, definitely branding. Folks, if I, I cannot emphasize it enough, get a brand and stick to it. Branding for us has set us apart. It's the reason why we have so many Facebook page likes because people know us by the Shed Gal. And so I cannot emphasize enough, get a brand, have someone do your logo, do a website, put it on your Facebook page and set yourself apart. Did you do it yourself or did you use someone like a graphic designer or things like that Used to help you with that? a graphic designer, yes. Got it, okay. Yeah. Where did Shed Gal come from? The, the, yeah. Just give us a quick yeah. summary and we'll come back yeah. to branding. Yeah. Real quickly, I had a couple of customers early on that said I couldn't remember your name. I put you in my phone as the Shed Gal and that was it. It was it and just stuck, like, and that was it. Absolutely. It. Well, you certainly yeah. did a great job on thank your branding. Thank you. Thank it is you. All over. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, our new sponsor, Fiverr. You guys, it's the number one best platform for you to go to find web designers, graphic designers, and so much more, and help with your branding and your business. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below to get 10% off for our viewers. What's the number one or couple mistakes that you think companies make that drives away customers and prevents them from making sales? Yeah, I think it comes down to training and the lack of training of their team members, which results in people feeling like they're being sold. That's never fun. And, and the, the used car sales experience that, of course, no one wants to deal with. What was your revenue last year? Just gross revenue yeah, and commission? Between five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars total. Whoa. We're talking some serious yeah. opportunity to make oh, a living. Oh yeah, from zero to that in less than five years. Yeah. And absolutely. Your, and your commission structure, how what is that structure like with Grace yeah. uh, Graceland? So we get a percentage of each sale and with Graceland Portable Buildings it's ten percent of the of the sale price. Do they set that or you kind of negotiated they set it? That. that is set. Okay. Yeah. So and that's pretty standard in the industry. I see. Yeah. Let's talk about your monthly budget right now. Where is that for marketing? Yeah. And what platforms give you the best return on your investment? Interestingly enough, um, our marketing budget consists of giving things away. And so we probably average $2,000, $2,500 a month okay. on uh, giveaways. And that's what we do for marketing. Tell me more about that. Elaborate, because our yeah. viewers want to know, yeah. what do you mean by giveaway? Which platforms yeah. are you using? Instagram, Facebook? Yeah. We have a Facebook page that uh, we almost continuously have giveaways on. We have a little red mini out here and we're giving it away. You're giving away a car? We're giving away a car. Okay, this is awesome. Tell me what that does to your business and how it helps your business overall. We like to give back and we like to help people. For this contest in particular, we're giving that car to someone who, who really needs it. But it brings you more customers? It does bring me more customers. You know, we, we have a, a good name. People follow us. They feel like they know us because we're out there on social media constantly. Mm -hmm. It dri certainly drives up our numbers on Facebook and our contacts and our sales ultimately. Susan, pretty cool shed. Walk yeah, us through some you. of the highlights and unique aspects of yeah, uh, this absolutely. particular model. So this is a Graceland Portable Buildings corner porch cabin. It's a 14 by 28. All of our buildings are delivered intact, which a lot of people don't realize that. They're wow. not built on site. They, you get your choice colors. Some of the things that set us apart in this industry is all our trusses are built with two by sixes with the two by four bottom rung. That's not normal. All of our buildings have a roof ridge vent that helps with airflow. Mm -hmm. All of our buildings have a patented soffit system proven to keep the building cooler. They're just the top of the industry. I have a hard time calling this a shed. I mean, yeah. you could park this in the back yeah. yard and make it home. And why do you call it a shed? Yeah. I mean, yeah, Graceland manufactures sheds. Now our customers, uh, use our buildings for all sorts of reasons. I we see. we have some buildings, pictures of buildings that customers have done that when I say they're nicer than my home, I'm not kidding. They are absolutely for, for stunning. Real. So you can do whatever you want with oh. your shed. Wow. You used to be a dealer for another uh, shed builder. Yes. You switched over to Graceland. We did. Let's talk about why that was an important yeah. decision for you as a business person. Yeah. The, the other company, we were there for a year. We were their number one dealer. We sold more sheds than all their other dealers combined. That brought problems. Uh, hmm. it, it just did. It brought quality. They just were not set up to run that amount. Just because you were moving so much volume. Yes, absolutely. We had not seen the Graceland Portable Buildings before we went to another dealer. Had I seen them, uh, we would have been a Graceland dealer right off the bat. But I we see. switched because Graceland has the highest craftsmanship portable buildings in the country. And not only that, they have great prices. But when we switched, it wasn't about the price. 
Mm-hmm. It was about how they build their buildings and how they do business that made our decision super easy to come here. So the quality difference was pretty oh, substantial. It's They all look the same drive when you drive by. Mm-hmm. You got to come in and see us. Our taglines, check out the rest and check out the best. We encourage <laughs> awesome. customers to go look at other companies. We want you to get the more, most value for your money. That's awesome. That's a good way to run a business. Let's go through your sales process. Somebody shows up at your doorstep. We talked about the, the form. Uh, what else do you want to highlight in terms of A to Z? You know, what major yeah. steps do you take? Questions yeah. that you always ask. Yeah. What are some highlights? You know, what style are they interested in? What size? What, what roof style? Do they have a color in mind? Do they have any access issues? Those are things mm-hmm. we ask each and every time to qualify to see if we're able to even help them. Right. So I order something. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't exist. How long does it take for, for uh, Graceland to produce it? And yeah, that varies it greatly. Uh, varies. COVID has wreaked havoc right. on on the material supply chain. And any any company that's selling a lot of buildings has a long lead time. It could be 12, 16, 20 weeks right now. But really? people are still buying. Sales skyrocketed when COVID started. So if I order now, I won't have yeah. my shed for a couple months at least. Yeah, exactly. I see. Yeah. So Well the- worth the wait. How much do you have on, on, on in queue right now yeah. for delivery? Oh, gosh. You remember? We have hundreds of buildings waiting, you know, wow. that are in queue. Yeah, Because you're, we you're between Washington and Yeah, we're Arizona. in Washington and Arizona, the shed gal. Yeah. yeah. For someone new to sales, you yeah. know, how can someone learn to see things from the customer's perspective? Boy, that's, that's super important. You have to be able to have empathy and put yourself in their shoes mm-hmm. um, and walking in their shoes. You know, people are, are spending a lot of money with us. We call around other dealers and other companies, and it's not about price checking. It's about seeing when they talk to you on the phone, how do they answer? Are they asking your name? Are they asking you any questions? Are they just you know, throwing up a price to you. Mm -hmm. And so we do a lot of training behind the scenes with our teams because we want them to treat people differently than what happened when I was trying to buy a shed. Do you use any particular schools, resources to train your staff? So we actually put together a 52-page Shed Gal training manual that's available. Wow. We've we've said to any other dealer out there with any company, I mean, we're happy to share it. That's kind um, of you. No, for you guys. Yeah. So we do a lot of team training where we just talk about, here's this experience. What what could you do differently with that? Okay, this was said to you. How could we react differently? Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot more time with our team than most dealers do. What are the ingredients, key ingredients for a perfect customer service experience? I think finding out, taking the time to find out what a customer wants and needs is, is just I can't emphasize how important that is. Number and, one. And following through with what you say you're going to do. Being accurate when you give them a price. Nobody l- likes the, oh, by the way. Uh, nobody. Nobody lo- oh, likes that. Oh, by the that. way, I messed up yeah, on my quote yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And, and, and following through. The, there are challenges, especially with COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, time frames have gotten a lot longer than we anticipated. But it was trying to communicate as much as we possibly can the information we have. When somebody joins your team, right, what's the first thing you teach them to say why or why not? Yeah. You know, there's so many things we go over, but part of it is asking the questions. How do we explain our buildings? You know, we Mm -hmm. explain them from bottom to top and and then everything in between, but not just the lingo. Yeah, it's the lingo, but it's how does it benefit the customer? You know, why does it matter that it has a roof ridge vent? Nobody cares, but they sure care that it helps with maybe airflow, right? Yeah, maybe you they know? don't know why. So it's right? education. It's it's teaching people, our team members, how to educate without being pushy. We emphasize the fact of how we will treat people and what is not allowed. Mm-hmm. And so we want customers to have the best experience possible. And, and we do that by training, hiring the right people to begin with and training them properly and, and doing ongoing training. We want a customer to feel like we care because we actually do. Right. Whew, it is cold, but let's do Blitz. All right. I always love Blitz. What's your favorite business book? Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. What car do you drive? Well, here they are. What a, <laughs> I mean, hard not to notice. Yeah, okay. yeah. Was there any point in time when you thought of going back to what you did previously? Absolutely not. What's the one thing you can't start your day without except coffee? A plan. Just map it out my day. 
and we, I know that things are gonna change all day long, but I always have a plan of, of these are the things I need to get done, and these are the things that can wait till tomorrow if necessary. Awesome, the last one, when you're not running a business, what would we find you doing? Flying on an airplane, going to travel. Awesome. About review platforms, Yelp, yeah. Angie, how important is that for this business? Does it generate new leads, build yeah. a better brand awareness? I wouldn't know, we you don't would, use any of them. You don't, have you ever thought about it or is there a reason you don't? No, we, we, we are so busy and continually expanding that we have not seen a need for it. I haven't found a benefit to growing our business with any of those platforms, so we just have said no. For somebody watching that's really just fascinated by, you know, sales, love sales, mm -hmm. loves the idea of sheds and how mm -hmm. simple it is, is there an opportunity for them to get going and oh. do the same thing in their market or is oh, it completely tapped out? Oh no, it's there, especially in, in, in the West Coast, it is not, it's in its infancy. I would encourage really? anyone who is interested in this business to call me, contact Graceland, contact another carrier, uh, another company. I mean, they, we could have 20 more shed dealers in Snohomish County and we'd still all be selling a ton of sheds. Wow. I encourage it, it is a great, opportunity to get into, especially right now. I want to put you on the spot. And since we're talking about sales and yeah. techniques, can, sure. can you can you maybe sell me this pen? Sure. Just want to see what you would say yeah. and how you would go about it. Yeah. Paul, I, when you came in today, you mentioned you needed a pen. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Do you need just one pin or do you need 500 pins or somewhere in between? I'd prefer to have more than just one. Okay. I go through them pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, do you like blue or black ink? Uh, I prefer blue. That's just my preference, my favorite color. Do you like this type with this this type of lid? No. Or, okay. No. Nope. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the catalog and we're gonna we're gonna look at different designs for you. Do you need a logo on it? Uh, I would. Yeah, I would love that. Perfect. Them. Yeah, yes. Possibly yeah. your name and phone number. Correct. Okay. Yeah. How yeah. soon? As do a real you need estate them? agent, that's important. Oh yes. How soon do you need them? Oh, it, they are gonna be for your real estate business. Correct. This is not personal use. No. I should ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. So how soon do you need them? Uh, just within a couple of weeks, if okay. possible. Super. If so that would be something where we'd have to talk about the expedited shipping. Mm -hmm. There is an additional cost, but the benefit to that is you're gonna. Have Absolutely. them when you need them. Yep, I need so, them when I need them. So, uh, are you? What number are you thinking? You, you're going to want to give them away to customers. Uh, yes, yeah, it's going to be more of like a marketing a tool to give Perfect. away to customers All and right. clients. Well, I thank you for asking that. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Well, let's look at uh, the designs. Let's find out what you like, and then let's look at the price breaks for how many you buy. Because the more you buy, the cheaper they are. Each. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I definitely want to get a good deal. So, well, I great. think you've got me sold. Wonderful. And I like the a lot of question asking. We, we want to hear from you guys how you think. Susan did. So comment below, feel free to say the good, the bad, all the comments, right? Because we read That's them right. and we will provide feedback as well. Who is your target audience and how does that change the way you market, the way yeah. you sell? Age doesn't matter in this, in this business. So we don't target a, a certain age, but what we do target is typically homeowners or someone who maybe even rents that has a short term storage need mm -hmm. because we can take care of that too. So it kind of varies, but we also don't get too particular on that because we don't want to limit ourselves to just a certain group of people. When you talk about Facebook marketing, do you do like a marketing campaign on Facebook where you target certain areas? We market in the entire area that we're in. And you know, we, for here, we take care of all of Western Washington. If there's a dealer that's far enough away that we can benefit them to by sending a customer to them, that's what we're gonna do. What is the right personality type for a salesperson? So yeah. If that's even right. I mean, is, what do you, what's a good trait for a salesperson? Yeah. It may be cliche, but I think service, wanting to serve the customer, caring, friendly personality. We've got staff that have never sold anything in their life and they are killing it, mostly because of their personalities and they want to serve the customers. Do you think everyone can be a good salesperson or, uh, on that note? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you can't train someone's personality. You can train them in the details of the job and how the buildings are built. Some people are better suited in other, in other careers, but there is so much opportunity in this business mm -hmm. that it just blows my mind. So I think, you know, when I'm looking for someone, I'm primarily looking for personality and the willingness to learn the business. 
Anything else we need to touch on that's important when it comes to yeah. sales leads and social media? I mean, you didn't mention Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. Are you doing any of those? Let's I do. About- I do have an Instagram channel and just recently mm-hmm. started with TikTok. It kind of blows me away. I, I search TikTok. There's not there's not shed dealers on there. We're, we're kind of cutting edge. We're going there. I think the biggest thing with social media for us is it drives customers to our lots. We're on a super busy road. I can see that. that, Yes, we sell to some people that drive by, but that is not why we're here. Mm -hmm. We're here because it's it's easy to find and social media drives those potential customers to our location. And that's huge. Can someone do what you're doing, be a shed dealer, but not have a location as big? Absolutely. I mean, what's the key when it comes to locations doing this? I think, you know, everybody wants to think, oh, a busy road is the best place to be. It, it, It needs to be a convenient spot to get to. You certainly don't need to have as big of a lot. But that won't necessarily dictate the amount of volume you're able to sell, right? Whether no. it's a big lot or small lot. No, I don't. I think if I had three buildings on this lot, I could probably still sell as many buildings a month as I do. Got it. Yeah. How do you turn leads into paying customers? I know yeah. we've touched on it a little bit. Is there anything specific you're doing to, to convert people? Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a good question because like people will call Graceland Portable Buildings directly or they'll go on their website and we get what's called a hot lead. Mm-hmm. We have a high turnover rate as far as turning those calls that we make to them uh, into sales, but we don't believe in cold calling. Um, I don't know about you, but you don't want me calling you at dinner time to see if you want to buy a shed. So we have a high retention rate. We have a high closing rate of people coming in, but but there's no pressure. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a process that we go through in, in helping people make their decision. Well, I imagine if you want a shed, you're pretty, you know, focused on yeah. getting a shed. It's yeah. like a unique sometimes, purchase item. Sometimes, sometimes people, I've, I had a gal come in one time, she's like, I want that one and that one. Oh. Okay, that was it. That was the extent of it. There's also people that want to take their time and think about it. I've had people mm-hmm. that literally I talked to three, four years ago call me and now they're ready. I see. So it, it's not discounting someone just because they don't buy today. I'm in sales as well as a real estate agent, right? Yeah. And we never want to make our customers feel like they're being sold to. Oh yeah. So elaborate on that, your experience, and why does that yeah. turn people off? That was my experience when I was okay. buying a shed. There was, uh, there were no questions asked about what, you know, what I really wanted mm-hmm. or needed. And uh, we all know the, you know, the slimy sales experience that we don't want to have. And we, yes. we vowed from day one that that was never going to be how we operated. How's the process and experience yeah. different compared to somebody yeah. else? Yeah, Our whole goal when a customer comes to our lot is finding out what they need and what they want. And I think that's super important because we can address their needs only after those questions are answered. So So. so it sounds like you're the one doing all the question asking and the client customers answering and giving you all the feedback. Correct. Which then helps you deliver the best experience. Absolutely. That's awesome. After the sale has happened, do you do any after sale interactions and how does that help yeah. the overall customer experience? Like yeah. what do you what tools are you using, systems in place? Yeah. We try to follow up with customers frequently. We're able to meet up and go out and see the shed after it's been delivered and ask the customer how their experience from start to finish was. So we do follow up calls, we do follow up visits. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we just randomly get a picture of the building as it's been delivered and, and then they're reaching out. So yeah, it's super fun. Do you use like a an app software? or anything like that or is it just you know how are you tracking yeah we try we have a really nice excel spreadsheet that we put together when we first started so that we can track you know when it was ordered Mm -hmm. the process when it was delivered and 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 follow up with them when it comes to sales emotional intelligence yeah you know however you want to answer that but is that important in sales why or why not yeah it is. I, I think being able to read the customer uh, because everyone's different. Um, I think that's super important um, to just be able to relate to someone and, and get an understanding of what they're there for. Obviously, they're interested in a shed or they wouldn't have stopped in. Mm-hmm. But but to learn, you know, what suits their needs. So to understand their needs and then to seek understanding with a solution. I don't want to be giving you a quote on a barn style roof building when your HOA requires the 412 picture. That's a good point. So it's, it's all about asking questions. But it isn't about you have this checklist of questions. It's just an outline of a conversation conversation that you should be having with every single potential person that comes in. How do you build 
customer loyalty through sales. Yeah. How do you build that, that customer relationship for the long haul, for yeah. you particularly? You know, we get a lot of referrals in the shed industry, and, and no one is perfect. You know, you, you, the fact is you cannot please 100% of the people out there, but we work really hard to let people know we care, and we are here to help them. Have you had a bad experience that, as a business person, you learned from it and kind of ended it with a good note or is there anything that comes to mind oh. that you can share? How you, know, you turn something bad into yeah. good, you know, not happy yeah. customer became happy. You know, not going into specifics, but I think it's right. one of those things where there are sometimes that there are people that just cannot be pleased no matter what you do. But that's not the norm. That's mm -hmm. a very, very small percentage. And knowing that most people, you know, they want a good product and they want you to do what you say you're going to do. And that's what we do. Do we fail at times? Absolutely. We are human beings, but we try our best to make sure that everybody's satisfied. Email list. Yeah. Every business we interview, some use one, others yeah. don't. What yeah. is it like for you? You know, we don't. And here's the reason why. I get so many marketing emails every single day. And most of them I just delete. It's mm -hmm. just something I, I just don't feel like adding to a customer's pile. If we have their email, they know who we are and where we are. Is there anything else you can share in terms of unique, unconventional sales techniques that you use? Well, our system of the customer information sheet and asking the appropriate questions is unique. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you call around TED and dealers, they're, they're not going to do it. Um, they're, they're winging it because they don't know any differently. So we put together a process that works, and when we find a better way, we'll change it. But until then, we're going to keep doing the same thing. That's awesome. Yeah, we call it the CIS, so you guys need to check it out. We'll Absolutely. make sure we leave the link in the description below. What's one sales tip or advice that you can give to a new business owner watching us right now? Yeah, have a solid process and reach out to those in your industry that are doing really well, because most of us are more than happy to help other dealers. So don't be afraid to don't be afraid reach out. To, don't be afraid to, to, to reach out for help. And you don't know what you don't know. And uh, many of us that do really well want to help others do really well too. That's awesome. This place is pretty loud with not only trucks, but the turkeys I hear. Yes, <laughs> we've got turkeys. That's awesome. <laughs> In this business, sales, right? You have happy customers. Sometimes you have dissatisfied customers. Mm -hmm. What else do you want to highlight in order to, you know, to, to take care of those people as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes things happen. These buildings, believe it or not, they're built by human beings. And no you know, robot. what I've found with Graceland, yeah. It's thought amazing. it was robots. It's, I know, no robots. <laughs> you know, Graceland stands behind their product. And, and again, let's be honest, you can, sometimes someone just can't be pleased, but Graceland stands behind their product. They're gonna fix the issue or they're gonna make it right. That's just who Graceland is as a company. Just own up to it, Absolutely. take care of it. Absolutely. Got it, yeah, pretty simple, but the right way to do it. Absolutely. Someone that's new to sales, yeah. right? What can they do to improve their skills and experience yeah. to, to really become that master salesperson? Yeah. Someone told me many, many years ago in insurance, that agent does really good and that one does really bad. Do everything they do and don't do anything they do. And that philosophy sticks with me every single day. And it is so true. And the other thing is we only know what we know and we don't know what, what we don't know. So if someone's offering you help, for goodness sakes, take it. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the answer, ask for help. There, there are people out there like me that want, we, we thrive on helping other people. Uh, but you know, we were all new at sales at one point. And it, it's more about learning the product, being proud of what you sell, and just going for it. No guts, no glory. Mm -hmm. And just loving what you do. Absolutely. I remember you said sales is not for everybody. So for sure. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't been in sales. Well, Susan, this has been great. I know our viewers probably wish you all the success for 2022. <laughs> Thank um, you. And then you wanted to mention something for our I viewers, did. something special. I what did. would that be? So our Shedgel uh, dealerships operate in Arizona and Washington State. If you come to me and you buy a Graceland portable building, um, I'm going to give you 5% off through the end of 2022. Wow. So that's any of the Shedgal dealerships, and that's a heck of a deal. Let's, so Let's make sure that you mention yeah. the code. We can say Upflip Shedgal. Absolutely, Upflip Shedgal. There you go. You guys take advantage, 5% off on something that's 10 to 15 grand. That's a pretty good savings in Absolutely. my opinion. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. This has been great. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure. pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode with Susan, the owner of Shed Gal. What an incredible story, interesting industry. 
take all the advice, execute on it. Make sure you check out our sponsor, Fiverr, and their discount, her discount of 5%. Take advantage of that. We appreciate you guys for watching. Take a second to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of our episodes. Thank you for watching.